Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehra Bagga and today I'll be playing the final blitz on Lee Chess and during the game I'll try to be as instructive as possible like always, making sure that there's something to be taken away as a learning that helps you improve your game to the next level. Now before I start with the game, I request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without a miss. So yeah, let's begin with the game and see how it goes. Got the white pieces here. I'll play the London system setup. Starts with d4. Bishop comes on f4. And you can probably place your piece in such respective orders, irrespective of the fact that what your opponent does, you can play your pawn to e3, knight over to f3, uh, bishop over to d3. Just trying to develop the bishop, eyeing the right diagonal towards the king. Here you can take, if opponent takes with the knight, you can take the knight as well. If takes with the pawn, you can just pin the other knight. And then, of course, you have a knight coming out, but then problem is that the pawn can come forward. So to avoid that, you can just play, first of all, pawn to c3. Uh, just making sure that the queen can even come to c2 and now after taking the knight you can go ahead for taking the extra pawn but since my open played here i can just try and retain that pin somehow always a good idea dark square bishop is an important piece for black so you have to it's okay to if you want to trade it here the light square bishop is not eyeing the right diagonal so definitely you can trade if required Okay, so now this bishop is being attacked twice. Have to be careful. So what I'll do is I'll get the bishop here, which controls the square, of course. And this pins the pawn as well. Okay, pawn fought by the opponent. Um, I can develop the knight here. The idea of attacking the pawn further. I'm attacking it twice. It's defended twice for now. But after I trade this knight with the bishop, I'll have extra support. Okay, my opponent gets the knight here. So I'll take here. My opponent can take with the pawn or the queen. Takes with the pawn. Which means I can just move my queen aside now. Now queen is attacking. Uh, the pawn on b7 which now I can trade but then my opponent gets to have an active rook which then comes in can be problematic and to avoid that hassle I will not take that pawn but just get my queen over to a4 trying to defend the queen there and attack defending my bishop as well just in case required uh, bishop here means I have to, to develop the knight. Just connecting both the knights, saving the pawn on g2. Okay, open attacks my queen. And I like to trade the queens if my opponent is okay. I can take with the knight or the pawn. Anything will be okay. I can still castle either side of the board. Both the options are available. Okay, now I have to take a call which pawn I need to trade with. I'll take with this pawn. The idea is simple. I will castle on the queen side, get my rook active. If I take with the other pawn, then bishop comes in trying to pin my pieces. So now I'll castle. So this is a decent position to be in. Okay, pawn forward, which means I have to get my bishop backwards. It's attacking a free pawn there, which I won't mind taking if allowed. A knight can hop in as well here. Okay, I can trade this, but then uh, Rather, I think I should go ahead with the knight, but then I lose the pawn over here. 
Oh, what should we do? Can I just move this knight? I'll eventually end up with double pawns, but that's fine, maybe. This attacks the bishop. Okay, operand does take there. I'll take with this pawn so that I'm attacking a pawn again. Which often in defense with the knight. Now I have to defend the pawn. Which can be done in a couple of ways. I'll try choose this one maybe. This saves the pawn. Can go ahead with the knight and trade the knights. That would be one of the ideas. Maybe just get the rook here. Okay, open might be trying to double up here. Now, can I take the pawn? Uh, I can't. I should take the rook here. Opponent takes back. Of course, I'm defending this, so neither I should not be worried about this. I'll go here, trying to attack the bishop and the knight. Open can take, and I'll take with the pawn mostly. Okay, takes this instead. Interesting choice, I must say. And I'll take with the pawn. Yeah, let's take with the pawn. Open and takes this. And I have to defend. The only way. I have to take the pawn next. Okay, my knight is being attacked. Okay, now I can take the pawn. If he takes, I take two. So we are equal in terms of material at least. Pawn structure is kind of similar to. Let's go ahead with the king. It's gonna be a good end game. Can step up. Open can come here and then I can trade the rooks. So doesn't. I will step here. Just making sure that if pawn comes forward, I can take. Okay. I'll try to give him a pawn break. It denies. So I can go here, attacking the pawn. To defend this, he has to get the rook back. Does. I can take control of the fifth rank. Trying to maybe give a check next. Uh, with the pawn maybe. Not a bad option. Okay. Um, I can push this. Can be weakening too. Let's go with this pawn instead. Have to be precise here with all the moves. Uh, lagging behind on time as well. I just go ahead with the pawns. Maybe slide backwards too. Because my can max come here, but not further from there. I can go this side, trying to go over to F eventually. Okay, I can push the pawn. And push it further. Okay, I'll take. Okay, both of us take it. Come back, trying to take the pawn next. I'll go up. Try to go here. Uh, I take. Can trade the rooks. Oh, 
Okay, maybe I've got the opposition. Okay, he goes to the wrong side. That means I am getting the queen on the board faster. Now this is going to be easy. I can control this. And then I can just walk towards the king safely and slowly. Grab that pawn and win the game. And open loses on time as well. And that's how you can win games if you know the end game well. Let's analyze the game from computer perspective once. 60 moves, a lot of moves for a game that was a five minutes, a blitz game. Let's begin. So I start with the London system, typical moves there. Uh, and just developing the pieces in the right way. I can get the bishop back, but I exchange there and then try to pin the knight, which was immediately removed by placing bishop over to e7. And then open castles, I develop my queen. I can take the knight, but I don't. Open now attacks with the knight. I go back ahead with the bishop instead on c4. b4 by opponent, I get the knight on d2. Open comes in with the bishop. I take, open takes with the pawn. The pawn can be a bit of headache. And then after bishop comes in, I didn't take this, this pawn as I was ex explaining the game, that if I take, problem is that the rook can come here. That's first problem. Second problem is a bishop can also come in the game and that's attacking my queen as well as I'm going to lose a rook. So that would be nasty. Uh, and that rook cannot be saved now. So I lose a piece, I lose the game straight away. So don't be too greedy. I went with queen a4. Opponent tries to now attack the g2 pawn, which I defend by developing the knight. That's development with tempo. And then I offered queen exchange, which my opponent does take happily. Now I have to take with one of the pawns. My idea of taking with the e pawn uh, was that I don't want to open up the other side of the board. Now, if I take with this and suppose now bishop comes in, that pins my knight. And yes, I can take my opponent's knight and ruin his pawn structure. But then uh, my knight is pinned, which I don't like. Uh, eventually, my opponent will have, a, say, like if I play a pawn forward here, my opponent can take this knight first. And I cannot take with the knight, so I have to take with the pawn. And now my opponent can take the other knight as well, just in case. Uh, yes, I have a center, a king in the center, uh, and my pawn structure is kind of weird there, I would say. I can take that extra pawn and should be winning. Uh, but it's not a very comfortable situation to be in, I would say. Instead, I took with the other pawn, which was the e-pawn there. Open gets the rook centralized. And I castle queen side, which was the idea. Now pawn forward by opponent. Uh, and then I get bishop over to g3. Offering bishop exchange, which I didn't take. And let my opponent take. Again, taking with the edge pawn so that I can attack the pawn on h6. Now knight to g4 by opponent. I get the rook up. Opponent offers rook exchange. That what, that's what happens. And then I try to exchange the knights. Uh, my opponent take the knight first. I take with the pawn. And now I try to defend that pawn first. Took on the knight there, uh, the pawn first, so that if my opponent takes the knight, I also take the knight. And then we have like kind of equal structure there. Uh, black is slightly ahead because of this isolated pawn in the center. That's why advantage to black. Here my opponent gets the rook on e8 trying to take control of the open file, but not the semi-open. Ideally, rook to d8 was better, attacking the pawn straight away so that I have to defend it and then probably take advantage of the fact. But instead, he wants uh, rook e8 and then it's equal pawns. Uh, it's a drawish kind of situation or black can uh, create some advantage too. But here I tried to first break open one of the sides, which he denies. Then he defends uh, the pawn on h file, and then I just block the pawns forward, moving forward. And taking control of the file, fifth rank was important here, making sure that the king cannot move forward. 
So that was one of the tactics. And then after playing that, I just pushed my pawn forward. Of course, the pawn is defended with the rook. So it cannot be taken. Opponent moves aside. I then go ahead with the other pawns, just trying to block everything. Then just go behind. Opponent takes control. I can now push pawns forward as well, but I don't. Opponent goes there. And then I now push my pawn forward, just making sure that I am uh, creating some troubles for my opponent, just pushing it one more step further. Now he has to stop. Otherwise, I can just take this pawn first. And if he cannot take back, because I then get to have a queen with a fork. So that can be nice too. So he goes back and I take the pawn, opponent takes, I take another, then he takes another pawn and so do I. And then I just try and attack the other pawn, opponent comes down, I have to save the king here, he takes the pawn, I try to attack the rook, rook goes back and here I can trade. And so I trade, uh, here if you see it's a draw situation. But it's a draw if my opponent plays well from here. He has to take his king and stop my pawn from promoting first, which doesn't, which he tries to in the initiate, initial part. But then uh, I got the control of the file. Here also, uh, it is tricky. He has to move the king ahead so that uh, even I move the king ahead, maybe. So uh, this can be something like this. I also move. And if we just try and repeat this, that would be a draw. But if you try to play pawn forward, uh, that's losing because once I get to uh, get onto d5, there's no way that you can stop this pawn eventually promoting to queen. And since my pawn is closer to the queening square, that would be white winning this game. And that's what happens in the game. I got control and then I just promoted to queen. And once queen is on the board, all you need to do is just prevent the queen uh, square first and then just take your king there and take the pawn as well and end your opponent's hopes. So uh, it's important to know the end game, how do you play it? Uh, and that's a simple way of uh, dealing in complicated games. Just try and exchange everything and eventually just go take it to the end game and win it easy. I hope you like the video. Do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now. Give a thumbs up to the video as well. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.